Hello. This video gives some guidance on replacing or repairing roofs so they perform well in future strong winds. You may have decided to replace your roof for any number of reasons. As part of a renovation, to fix leaks, or it may just look old and tired. Damaging winds can occur in any part of Australia, so for the safety and well-being of your family, it's important to make sure that all of your roof, not just the roof cladding, stays on. As part of the job, the builder or contractor will have to remove all of the old roof cladding, and that's the perfect time to check over the roof structure. That's the battens and the trusses or rafters, and to make sure that the connections are doing their job properly. The success of a roof in resisting wind forces depends on the strength of these connections throughout the whole roof, not just the fixings for the cladding. The only time these connections, which your builder may call tie-downs, can be checked is when the roof cladding is off. Because the work involves more than just replacing the roofing material, a qualified person, usually a builder, must make an assessment of whether your whole roof structure can carry the loads from your new roofing. Let's think about the loads that the wind can put on a roof. This 370 ton plane flies because of what happens to the airflow over the wings. As the wing rushes through the air like this, some air gets pushed down by the underside. That gives a little bit of lift. But really exciting things happen on the upper surface of the wing. As the front of the wing pushes air molecules up and out of the way, the wing moves into the space where they used to be. Now there is nothing on the upper surface of the wing. This nothing is actually suction which lifts the plane into the air. Aerodynamically, the same thing happens to a roof that is stationary while the wind is rushing past it. As the wind hits the house and goes up and over the top of the roof, it sucks out air above the roof and that creates suction on the roof. These suction forces are highest on the edge and near the ridge of the roof. So those are the areas that need the extra anchorage. Wind can exert several tons of force onto the roof of a house. So if we were only using weight to hold the roof down, we would need to park the equivalent of one or more elephants on the roof in non-cyclonic areas and a whale on the roof in cyclonic areas. Obviously we can't do that, but there are tons underneath the roof and we can tie the roof down using the weight of the whole house. The secret to keeping the roof on is to ensure that there's really good tie down from the roofing all of the way down to the bottom of the house. The roofing must be anchored to the battens and in most cases that's done really well. These photos show some typical success stories. See how well the roofing is tied to the battens. But then the battens need to be tied down to the rafters or the trusses. And then the trusses have to be tied down to the walls. And the walls have to be tied down to the floor. And the whole house anchored strongly to the ground. The most important task is to tie the roofing and the whole roof structure to the walls. While the roofing is off, it is possible to see what is holding down the battens and the rafters or trusses. And if the existing connections aren't good enough, they can be replaced at that time. The strength of the wind is different in different locations. So the tie down requirements for roofs also vary. As well as differentiating between cyclonic and non-cyclonic regions, individual sites in the same suburb may not have the same design wind speeds. Houses that are in exposed locations or have a good view experience higher wind speeds. Make sure you discuss the design wind speeds for your particular house with your builder. Different site wind classifications require different tie down connections. The highly loaded areas around the edges and ridges of your roof require stronger batten tie downs than other areas of your roof. Your builder will select appropriate connections for the whole roof structure using Australian standards. For example, we have learned from damage investigations that nails on their own don't have enough strength to hold down edge and ridge battens against wind loads in almost any part of Australia. So if your battens are currently fastened with nails, the builder should install some stronger fixings. Also, if your house is close to the coast, 
your builder must use special corrosion resistant fasteners. If you are changing the type of roof cladding, for example from a tiled roof to a sheet roof or vice versa, your builder will need to check the whole roof structure so that it is safe for the new roofing material. There may also be variations in local construction practices that your builder must consider. For example, if you live in a cyclone area and currently have overbattens on top of your roofing, these must be either put back over the new roofing or replaced with an engineered tie-down solution. In summary, you need to be aware that although your aim is to simply replace the roof cladding, if the tie-downs are inadequate, then you may lose your new roof in a future wind event. So we recommend that you discuss the following issues with your builder. Check the wind classification for your house. And while the roof is off, check whether the existing batten to rafter or truss connections are okay, and if not, upgrade them. Check whether the existing rafter or truss to wall connections are okay, and if not, upgrade them. And use corrosion resistant fasteners if you live near the coast. In most cases, the builder will probably not be able to discuss these issues until he has removed the old roof cladding, and you will have to decide then to pay extra for any necessary improvements to the roof structure. The upgrade may cost a bit more than simply replacing the roof cladding, but it will be a sound investment in your family safety and the protection of your property.